Well, hello and welcome to the Footer Brigade podcast. I'm Robert Kaplan. Today, I've got a special guest, Carrie McDonald. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Uh, Carrie is the social media photo editor at the New York Times, and that's a super cool job. And I'm really thrilled to talk to you about all things social today. Before we start, I just want to give a quick thank you to Adorama. Uh, for the use of their event space uh, and all of our other events that we do. Uh, you can check out um, the events that we host here at our Facebook page. Please hit the like button. Um, also, if you're watching right now on Facebook Live, hit, our, hit the subscribe button. Is that what it is? Or the follow button? Whatever the button is that makes you see our live updates, uh, click that so you see more of this as we um, go forward. Also, a big thank you to uh, uh, Canon Professional Services um, and all of their support as well as Temba Bags. So back to Carrie. Carrie, um, we have, you've been on the Photo Brigade uh, on a panel before yeah. here and this is the first time we're actually sitting across from each other doing a one-on-one. -on -one. But last time you were here it was a, a panel on sort of the I forget what the title was now, but it was like the future, <laughs> the future of like photography, and it was a panel of of, of great folks with uh, different publications talking about social media and just sort of you know how photographers are making their way in the world these days. Um, but today we're here to sort of talk about you specifically, and um, you know normally I, I have uh, photographers or simple simply photo editors um, or filmmakers, but. But today, you're, you're a special class of photo editor, a very new class, which is for specifically for social media. How long have you been at that position? And, and sort of, let's start off by say, seeing what preceded, tell me what preceded uh, this job change for you. Yeah. Um, well, I've been doing this job now for just over a year and a half, I think. I started last January. Uh -huh. um, and we were saying just a few minutes ago, things have changed a lot even in that time. Incredible amount. <laughs> yeah. Um, but before that, uh, I think, I, well, I got my start at the Times um, right out of grad school. I went to study journalism here in New York at the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism, which I oh, always okay. plug because it's great. Well, yeah. And that's where <laughs> the New York Times portfolio reviews are. It is, yeah. I had never been there before, except for last year I volunteered and helped out a little bit that place is really cool it's beautiful um, it's not I I should know how old it is I guess at this point it's maybe almost 10 years old mm -hmm. um, when I started there it was just a few years old um, it's a public university so it's a good price <laughs> oh, okay yeah great professors working there and they were at the time you know seven years ago now they were really thinking about um, the future and so training people in a broad range of disciplines everyone had to learn to use a video camera we used um, flip cameras at one point flip cameras. Oh, yeah, I remember <laughs> that those. came in handy yeah. <laughs> um, but you know they were there and they still are really trying to think about what's next so 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 the key there is that you were studying to be a journalist yes a writer actually. a writer a reporter. Uh, uh, right <laughs> a reporter uh, you, you didn't have the expectation at that point to get into the the world of photography or photo yeah. editing right I, I had taken photos for years carried a camera everywhere but I didn't even I, I guess I just didn't even consider the fact that you could have a career in photography. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to be a reporter. Um, and, you know, at some point at CUNY, you took a class on photography um, with Jim Estrin, who oh, yeah. was a photographer at the Times. He was my uh, one of my mentors when I was an intern at the Times 11, 11 years ago. Holy cow. Yeah. He's such a nice guy, isn't he's, he? He's mentored a lot of people. <laughs> um, he's so giving with his amazing. time. Yeah, he really is. Yeah. So, um, But a few months in, I got an internship working with him at the Lens blog uh, oh, okay. at the Times, which was very, you know, lucky. <laughs> for right. Me. Um, at that point, the Lens blog was relatively new, right? Yeah, it was probably six months old when I started there. Six months there. old. Yeah. I remember, and I talked about it in my, I haven't done a podcast with him it's been a couple of years now, but it was, you know, right at, not right after, but we t were talking about how he started that. I remember stopping into the Times building and saying to him, oh, you know, how's things going? What's new? What's going on? And he, and he goes, oh, I've got something really cool coming up. I can't tell you about it, but just stay tuned. <laughs> and then of course, like a week later, the lens blog popped up yeah. and super, super cool resource for all things photography. Yeah. And it, it's changed over the years too. I mean, when it started, I shouldn't say just Jim Estrin because Josh Hainer, who's mm -hmm. a staff photographer and editor at the Times and um, David Dunlap, who's a reporter in the right. Metro section, were also involved in the beginning there. Um, and I learned a lot from both of them as well. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, but so I did that. Um, 
continued at CUNY and when I graduated a year and a half later, I actually, we, they decided that they needed someone actually working on Lens with Jim and, and David and team. So yeah. uh, I was very lucky to grab a job. Um, well, it's interesting <laughs> now with with the social media and if, before social got super huge, it was blogging, right. regular blogging. Right. Mm -hmm. So when, I, when we started Photo Brigade, it was created as a blog. First, it was created as a Facebook page just to promote people's blogs. And then it turned into a blog itself because, you know, let's, you know, so, but now everything's turning into social these days. And I wonder now, um, for instance, the, the homepage of the Lens blog, mm -hmm. is it as popular as it used to be now with social? Do people just get their, the links to the individual posts from social media and? I mean, it ranges. Social's huge for Lens, um, definitely. Uh, it depends on the post. Uh, if something ends up on the New York Times homepage, uh -huh. that's, homepage still has a lot of power i know social you know is obviously a, a big driver these days right, but right, right. yeah it ranges for lens but at the time um i think it probably would have been a little different seven yeah. years ago so so you started at lens blog and then that transitioned for you a bit you well you, yeah you I, jumped over to, to, to signing right i actually jumped to hong kong <laughs> oh you moved to hong yeah, kong yeah. oh wow um for various reasons, complicated reasons, um, uh -huh. but a job opened up in Hong Kong and I wanted to do some traveling and uh -huh. explore a little bit. So it actually worked out really well. I went over there and um, worked in that office. At the time, that was the International Herald Tribune, mm -hmm. which was it, essentially- And now it's the International New, New York, York Times, Times right? Yeah. yeah. It actually changed names about a week after I left. Oh, okay. But uh, all along, you know, you work pretty closely with the Times right. um, from that office and even more so now. So, um, but it was my really my first opportunity to assign and work directly with photographers from the ground up on a story um, uh -huh. because with lens you know you're working with finished projects sometimes things people have been working on for 10 years right, right. <laughs> or archival images i did a lot with with those so well that's what so so we should quickly say lens blog it gives it, it gave the opportunity because with the new york times it's like the only thing that's published on there are the stories that the writers are writing and the pictures that go with those stories for the most part sometimes photographers would get lucky and be able to pitch their own you know work and slideshows mm -hmm. but the lens blog really gave a, a place to to put almost anything yeah. related related to the visuals in the New York Times, yeah. right? Um, so then you came back to to Lens Blog. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, I I was in Hong Kong for a year and a half. I, I wrote for Lens that whole time. Okay. And then I kept writing for them. Um, came back here, and started on after a few months. I am Canadian, so I didn't have a green card. <laughs> <laughs> Worked that out. Um, I started on the Metro Desk and the homepage of okay. the Times. So more At the homepage. Oh, nice. Yeah. I remember back when I was interning and freelancing more, the the online desks and the regular desks were completely separate. Yeah. Even at one point in like a different building, I think. Yeah. If I'm thinking right. <laughs> I don't know what year they made the switch, but. I, but now everyone's yeah. together, right? Oh, like yeah. we're all real close. And uh, everyone's on the web right yeah. now. <laughs> no one says the web anymore. <laughs> the web. <laughs> but but yeah no I mean almost not everyone but most people in the building are working, thinking right. about the online report. Um, right. You know, they just created the Print Hub, um, which is basically a group, a team of people who are dedicated to the print newspaper uh -huh. um, with the idea that they want more editors and backfielders to yeah. be able to focus on what things look like online. Yeah. Which I'm sure, you know, when I started at the Times or 10 years ago, especially, uh -huh. people would never have thought that something like this would happen. Right. Um, so, but yeah, almost almost everyone in the building is, is pretty is, web savvy these days. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's really great. <laughs> um, and and when did you make the transition to to being hired as this really? I mean, some people might think, oh, you know, that's that's like a when you first were hired, it might might not have sounded so high level, but now it seems like it's it's such a big deal to have the title as social media photo editor because so many eyes are on social these days yeah you have grown the instagram account i should pull this pull this up the instagram account here mm -hmm. um the new york times instagram account f to 1.6 million followers how long did it take you to get to this point um well we launched last march so what is that a year and a few months i guess a year um, and a few months um 
you know, we're not Nat Geo yet, <laughs> well, but, but yeah, you know, it's, it's wonderful. You also to started see. after Nat, Nat Geo yeah. as well. You guys we were late adopters. Late. We, st- we started very late. Um, it's funny. I, I joke, uh, with a few people about this, but back when I was at lens in New York, so 2010 or 11 or so, um, I remember a job opened up in social media and Jim, Jim Estrin had said, Oh, maybe you should think. And I was like, no, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to work in social media. So it's very funny. Um, the fact that I'm doing this full time now, but yep. I, so this job came about, um, in a, for a few different reasons. I think we were late to Instagram. Um, and everyone acknowledges that. And the main reason is because they wanted to ensure that we had someone who could be dedicated almost full time to curating this stuff. Um, we have a lot of photography coming in every day. You having worked with us as an intern, especially no, like the, Absolutely. the amount, the volume of photos that are coming in. Um, and a lot of them are pretty amazing. So it, for us, Instagram and all social media is just um, one more place to hopefully shine a light on some of that work that might get, you know, scanned by quickly in the newsfeed, um, might not get seen at all because the story that it's, uh, com- you know, going with is not a huge news story. So for the most part, um so it's not just Instagram, yeah. but it's also, do you, so you, what do you monitor? What is it, what social d- do you personally monitor? Well, I work, I'm, I, my job is, it's, it's weird. I'm on the, I'm in the photo department, so I am a photo editor. Um, and I am also on the social media team, uh-huh. um, which was part of our audience development team, um, and which kind of disbanded recently. But uh-huh. um, so I'm working with two teams very closely. Uh, on the social end, I work with one other editor, Jessica Anders- Anderson, uh-huh. on Instagram. So we work on the main account, and we also kind of work with our smaller accounts. So we have sports and oh, food. the separate accounts for those ones. Yeah, that way, so it's not so diluted with. Exactly. You don't want to. So, ha- you don't want to have like war next to a uh, cinnamon bun or something like that. We do sometimes. <laughs> we and, do sometimes. Yeah. and sadly, the most engaging <laughs> one's a cinnamon bun, right? Yeah. I mean, generally, I'll talk a bit more about that later. But um, but yeah, um, so we do that. But I also work on New York Times on Facebook, our main Facebook feed and our main Twitter feed, NY Times, mm-hmm. and I work on both feeds for the photo department as mm-hmm. well, um, where a lot of the lens blog stuff goes out and other s- super strong photography. Um, so it's safe to say that this iPhone right here has control to do, to, to get out to, to millions of people with a tap of a button. Yeah, basically. I mean, that's that's a, a pretty amazing key to the castle. <laughs> I know. Is there, I, was, I was just watching like a Louis C.K. stand-up routine and he was talking about there needs to be some sort of way that, that Apple or whoever has a button, you know, a, uh, a firewall so that you don't accidentally send a picture that'll traumatize your family or kids or something like that. Yeah. And I can imagine, you know, you know, the mistake of like, oh, am I, am I uploading something to my personal account? Well, or? actually, I have a work phone because oh, that's a good idea. At, the, at the beginning, you couldn't have two accounts on Instagram. Oh, right. You can now. So right. it's a little safer. But uh, I was just terrified that I would accidentally. Has there <laughs> been any know. close I mean, calls yet? All, the photos I post are mostly like right, street not, scenes in New York. Right, right, like, right. you know, I'm not. It's not going to get you in too much trouble. No, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's still we wanted to be careful. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, and it's, do, it's a lot. Do all the photos, uh, so I'm wondering, uh, before, you know, the, the New York Times, the, the web page and the um, paper itself, obviously, were the, the mediums for photographers to get their work in. Mm-hmm. Um, now you can instantly post things from your phone. What is the process for getting an image? You know, they're not all taken with phones. Probably n- not many of them are these days. Yeah. I used to get upset with people that would post <laughs> regular photos on their Instagram feed. It's only for phone phone photos, but now it's that's changed. Shift, totally yeah. changed. Um, what is the process? Do you ever? Do you actually ever? give out the password or does everything come through you guys lock and key and you post it i actually gave out the password for the first time two weeks ago <laughs> in rio in rio to doug mills let's yeah. uh, go to go to that because um the interesting thing about this is that it's instagram stories right um and so so yeah go ahead so doug mills is a photographer based in washington dc he's also a great sports photographer so he was one of four we had in rio Uh um this is an instagram story this is an instagram story doug produced on ny times our very first one um you know it's nothing super fancy but doug had has done a lot of experimenting on our snapchat account ny times um Uh 
and he's great at it. And the reason that um, I love the stuff he does and uh, the rest of the social media team too, because um, he has he has an eye. So on Snapchat, we've had a lot of reporters doing stories, um, people who are a little less visual, doing a great job. But um, you know, I'm a visual person, so I'm always looking for something to be a little more engaging. Yeah. So, so that's with ins- when Instagram Stories launched, we we're a little bit taken aback, but it's also pretty exciting, I think. Cause the engagement level is, is, is amazing with it, I found. Engagement is so far been a lot better than I thought it would be, I guess. Um, but You had been doing Snapchat before this, hadn't you? I mean, you guys yeah. have a Snapchat account as yeah, well. Yeah, we, a colleague of mine on the social team manages it, but you know, we all work on it a little bit. Do you bit. still do it, or have you switched? We still do it, because you know, it's, it's a lot harder to build an audience on Snapchat. Exactly, <laughs> and that's the thing about this, the cannibalized Snapchat, exactly. is that you already have your audience. Yeah, for One, me. 1.6 1. Like, million people. Right. As a person, you know, I, I really got into Snapchat, but maybe 15 people would see the things that I do. And when I do an Instagram story, a few hundred do, which mm-hmm. is a different, it doesn't really matter. I mean, most of the stuff that I'm doing there is just totally for fun. But but for for a company like us, you know, there's definitely, did a little whore. Yeah. <laughs> there's definitely value to doing something on this platform. But we do, you know, we've built an, a following on Snapchat, so we're going to keep going with it. And it's I think I, it's a slightly different audience. Too. I think so too. I think it might be a better way to engage with the younger, yeah. the kiddies, the kiddos. Yeah. And we're we're trying to be a little youthful. He, or, I don't know. Youthful. <laughs> we're trying to like maintain some of that feel on Instagram stories, but also focus on our best visual journalism still. So right. that's something we're wrestling with. Um, with Snapchat, I think we'll keep doing what we're doing. Um, and there are definitely photo driven things on our Snapchat feed. Yesterday, um, two news assistants went down to the, the morgue, our photo archives, uh-huh. um, and talked to two experts down there and kind of took people through the process of looking through you know millions of millions of photos <laughs> yeah and, and it was a, a fun moment near the end you know they took a, a photo of like a very early photo of the new york times archives from it must have I don't, I don't know what date what the date was but she said you know some of these photos are 150 years old you're gonna see this for 15 seconds it's gonna be gone in 24 hours you know things are just right <laughs> so so yeah snapchat Instagram stories, two different things. I think this one has a potential to be more appealing to a, a photo audience, I guess, uh-huh. because you don't have the silly filters. Um, you have filters, but they're not, um, you know, there's no puppy dog. Yet. <laughs> True. Yet. <laughs> um, True. They, yeah, they, they didn't, well, they wanted to be a slightly different, yeah. right? Um, so you mentioned the morgue, and so I'm just going to bounce oh, over yeah. to that real quick. This is something that has been on the Times for a little a while now. Mm-hmm. Basically, you guys go to the morgue and find some really old school photo, and then usually you flip. Yeah, there's the back of it. Yep. You, you click, and you can see what's on the back of it. Because back in the day, you would have the negatives. You would make, a, make an actual positive print on it, and then it would you know, be scanned or however they did it back in the day, and then they'd stamp when it was published. Um, so there's actually this this like history of where it's been and why it's been um, printed on yeah. the back of these things, and it's pretty amazing what you you guys have done in terms of turning this super analog thing that you guys have the the morgue you call it into a digital platform these days. I should say the main person who works on this is Darcy Evely. Um, she was in the Snapchat yesterday, uh-huh. but it was I think I'm pretty sure it was her idea. Yeah. Um, six years ago, maybe. Um, I worked on it with her at the beginning, but um, her idea, A, was just, you know, she basically goes down to the archives, pulls open a random drawer, and starts flipping. She doesn't go looking for particular subjects. Because I bet you could just like, oh my gosh, just find like most incredible things ever. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I, I think the random, uh, approach is actually a lot more fun than the other <laughs> when, you know, when you can't find something, yeah, was it yesterday, the day before I went down looking for the kindergarten folder, couldn't find it, found a number of other very interesting things. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But Darcy's approach here is, um, they're all old photos, they're random, but there, there's also a bit of a visual order, which, um, is more obvious in some cases than others, but you'll see connections between the, you know, this photo and the one before it and Mm -hmm. after it. So, um, I think they're posting 
every day or almost every day at this point and That's and it's so great. awesome it's 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 so such gem. a great way to tap into this and everyone hates to call it this but content that yeah. you guys already <laughs> have created and it, it's in your archives i yeah. mean the morgue is an interesting thing because it's just there's so much in it mm -hmm. and obviously you guys could probably have somebody full-time scanning and it just take oh, years have, and years and years. We could have 10 people full-time scanning, I think, you know. Oh, that's crazy. Um, but um, let's let's move to um, another another sort of thing that you guys are doing here, um, which is engaging your social audiences. Yeah. And so tell me about this walkabout, this graffiti walkabout. So this was uh, almost a year ago now, I think. Um, but we, we wanted to try, I don't know if you've been on an Insta meet, but a lot of people, uh, they get together and they take photos maybe on a particular theme or just of a particular p place and they Instagram them. It's just a fun way for right. you know, photo loving people, often amateur photo loving people to get uh -huh. to take photos together. Um, so we wanted to try this um, and we decided to try to put a, a slightly journalistic angle on it. We, we had David Gonzalez, who's an editor on the Lens blog and a reporter or columnist for Metro. Uh -huh. uh, he's a Bronx, um, he lives in the Bronx, born and raised. And he's also a street art and graffiti aficionado. So he... And there's a lot of that in New York. There's a lot of that in New York. And there's a lot of it in the South Bronx where we were. Um, so David uh, very kindly got very excited about this. <laughs> and we basically, um, we went to Instagram. Uh, we posted a photo of some kind and, and announced this walk and asked people to share their photos. And basically chose a group of people based on... Um, submissions so, and we were looking not just at people who take beautiful photos but people who live in the Bronx mm -hmm. people whose feeds seem to be dedicated to street art um, that kind of thing so we we're looking for a mix of people but also you know people from the neighborhood who might really like want to hear more about this from from David so right so then we, we all met up uh, a group of maybe 20 people and went on a walk on a very hot day that lasted two or three hours and um, it was great and the results was this one right you guys had like you had the hashtag yeah NYT Bronx walk. so anybody <laughs> could have so and so this is another question for sure. you uh, these these types of things when you do hashtags isn't that somewhat dangerous because and, I mean I don't know you can't really monitor you can't remove people's hashtags right, right. yeah so it could like someone could do something so nefarious. this one, I mean, this was happening. It happened in the span of a few hours. And then we started sharing photos from the walk um, fairly quickly. Um, but, you know, someone could have jumped on it for sure. Right. Um, this one, reporting from Rio, is the hashtag we used at the Olympics. Oh, cool. And so for the most part here, you'll see photos by... Um, our, our staff. Some of these are f like, this is a photo that I shared on NY Times. So, but, but this is a way for, and it's also a way for them to tag something for you guys to see, to possibly reshare. It's, a, it's an easy way for a photographer to get what they like or. Yeah. I think there, I think there are two kinds of hashtags. Um, for us, this kind of hashtag is um, sort of our way of building a collection of images from an ongoing story. So we did it with Rio. We did, did it with um, both conventions. Mm -hmm. We have a few reporters working on series, reporters, not photographers. Um, one is Declan Walsh. She's working on a series called Abroad in America. Uh -huh. He's basically explaining the U.S. election cycle to a non-American audience. He's uh -huh. not, he's usually based outside of the US so oh, okay so he's actually also um, a couple of his photos have run in the paper and they did a little project on his Instagram feed because it's great um, Declan Day J Walsh I think is the feed um, and so he has a hashtag that he's using and the point is just to mark something as a series so that if someone sees you know one reporting from Rio photo they can click and see more but with that one, there was one woman who's a, a blogger from somewhere who Hijacked adopted. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and usually people do adopt the hashtags eventually. But with that, that woman was very dedicated. To, you know, she, she was did, dedicated. She did like eight posts a day. <laughs> there are so. some dedicated trolls out there yeah. <laughs> that, will, that will do it. Some of her photos were nice. <laughs> well, sure. So, so here's a question. Um, mm -hmm. Do you also monitor everything? Like that, I can't even imagine having to monitor an account with a million, a million and a half followers, yeah. 
um, and all the comments and likes and, and so on. So do you monitor those and engage with people? Yeah. Um, it depends on the day and the, the nature of the post. I posted a, a photo of a stack of bagels this morning. <laughs> There's an, you know, I'm not too concerned about that. People are going to say, mm, or like, let's make this or let's go there. Um, they'll and tag their friends and make a joke about the weekend. Like, and then you got the people that'll say, oh, great job, New York Times. Bagels are real news. And, and no, Actually, <laughs> very few people are doing that these uh, oh, days, good. No, which surprises good. me. Yeah. Um, it does happen, though. I'm trying to think of a recent, you know, um, we posted a photo from a Trump rally the other night, a Damon Winter photo, mm -hmm. a very simple image of a man. Yeah, you can pull it up. This one here. This one here. So the man at the bottom right has his eyes closed and he's listening to the music before the rally began. Uh -huh. um, so for me, this is like a great politics image because uh, it's not hopefully not going to incite too much <laughs> right. hate in the comments, but it's also a beautiful photo. Um, but a few people did attack us for, say, you know, NY Times, why don't you report on Hillary's emails, that kind of thing. And, and so that's another, th right, exactly. So that's another thing is that, um, are, you, are you finding through social and the comments, because you're the one that sees firsthand the sort of barrage of positivity or negativity right. or whatever, um, but with the sort of war on specifically the New York Times <laughs> from Donald Trump sure, yeah. and so on, um, are you are you seeing that, as effect, is it affecting you? I mean, is your phone blowing up and you're like, oh my gosh. I honestly, um, I try not to look too closely when I know that something's going to be super divisive right. because it, it actually does wear on you after a while. Um, yeah. There was one uh, post in particular maybe a year ago that I, my husband made me turn my phone off because the comments coming in were, whew. but we don't, I mean, for the most part, our commenters are, are pretty... Right. serene right. <laughs> um, there's always going to be something that incites conversation um, and we want that you and know and that's a good thing yeah too. We don't, I don't want to post only photos of pretty trees and flowers you know I want to share news and stories um, but we're not this account isn't about breaking news or sharing the hard news only and there are definitely people who don't seem to understand that and right. that's fine I'm um, but there are certain situations like uh, the Paris attacks for instance that happened on a Friday night our time mm -hmm. and that weekend I had planned to run a series of Stephanie Sinclair images oh, that yeah. were she had shot them kind of a, as an aside for the magazine um, Is this the uh, ch the child uh no this was a very light subject uh -huh. they were members of a cert of this ringling brother circus oh, okay. yeah, I remember um, that too, and yeah. they were cool mm -hmm. portraits she shot for instagram we were supposed to run them all weekend and then saturday morning you know after a night had passed i woke up and uh, you know we can't run we can't run that <laughs> yeah yeah that's not so so we ran photos from paris but um but that happens not just on social i mean that's yeah. that's you know yeah. you were page one editor oh, at definitely. one point and and as big news happens things change you know and things change and one of the, there was one <laughs> thing i wish i had it up here now that i'm thinking about it. you guys put up a gif and i think it was the paris attacks as a matter of fact uh showing the the home page it was one of the one of these terrorist attacks that mm -hmm. happened um showing the home page and how it changed over a period of like 24 or 48 hours mm -hmm. um, based off of the news, how it went from just being a, a side little thing, sure. something's happening, to taking up a column, to taking up the thing, to just totally taking over dominating. the page, dominating everything. Um, so that's pretty interesting to, to see how um, just the web changes. It's, it's, it's like back to the future, right? you know, where it's changing in front of your eyes every time you hit refresh. Yeah, it's uh, hard. I mean, we, I also, I'm posting photos shot for the times almost entirely. Mm -hmm. So with news you know with the italy earthquake quake the other day uh -huh. you'll see a lot of other publications sharing photos we didn't we weren't able to get someone there so uh -huh. i didn't share a photo right um it was a big story but it you know wasn't like the paris it wasn't right. one of these stories right, right, right. that takes over the entire homepage. exactly so you mentioned uh stephanie taking over or doing this for instagram i'm also wondering and i know we talked about it in our past panel um but uh, a little refresher You've used social media in the past to find photographers, mm -hmm. um, not just in terms of like, oh, I like their work, I should use them someday, mm -hmm. but in terms of finding somebody who's in, in the vicinity or, or any, like, can you talk, talk a little bit about how you've used social to actually, because that's one thing that photographers like myself and others, right. they want to know, like, is there a way that I can make money sure. or, you know, find an editor and, and get published because of my activity on social media? Yeah. Um, when I was in Hong Kong, I found a few different people. Um, 
in various parts of Asia where we didn't really have many people available. Mm -hmm. um, just, I think it was mostly by t uh, on Twitter at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, m I think most photo editors these days are looking pretty closely at I Instagram, or many photo editors anyway, looking pretty closely at Instagram mm -hmm. um, and Facebook. And I think, you know, there's... It takes a lot of time, this stuff, um, and it depends on the person. Some people, our staff included, some people have uh, the passion and energy to devote to it. Um, but sometimes, you know, you just you just don't have time, yeah. and I understand that. So I think I, I'm not one to tell someone you have to do this to make it as a photographer, but I think it's pretty, pretty important and um, valuable, too. You know, when you're out somewhere... Um, you can tell you can start telling your story right away. Yeah, you don't have to wait <laughs> right um, so One of one of the things that we also talked about in the last panel was that um, a lot of times different publications ask to, to be to take over Instagram or, or for instance Stephanie Sinclair's thing mm -hmm. was specifically for Instagram right was you said it was shot for Instagram meaning yeah. it was shot for your guys's Instagram Stacy Baker worked with it on her but yeah they I meet with a magazine pretty regularly to say you know what do you have what's wh what'll work and so this was, in, what it this was in coordination with the magazine right oh I see yeah got it. yeah so that's that's another thing so you you will talk to all you've got the all the different desks. A lot of people don't realize <laughs> that the New York Times is not just one photo desk. Yeah. There are there's all these different sections: arts, metro, sports. What am I? What am I forgetting? Well, there are like, three different art sections for oh, one thing, which is confusing. culture. <laughs> we've got culture, we've got weekend arts, and we've got arts and leisure. Right. Um, but yeah, sports. Um, there's international, national, metro. There's metropolitan, which is the weekend the, right, city edition. Right. Um, we have, I work with Opinion, which is something I wouldn't have done in the past. Uh -huh. uh, I work with um, Sunday Review, which is part of Opinion. Uh -huh. um, one of my, I'm forgetting that. <laughs> right, there, there's <laughs> there just are a, quite there's a just few. The, the yeah. point is, is there's, there's a ton of different desks for yeah. you to work, work from. And I think the most important thing for having a dedicated social media photo editor is to figure out how you can bring social to all of these different right. desks, desks and then maximize them and schedule them so that you're yeah. getting maximum exposure of this work. Yeah, it's one of these things. So my title is social media photo editor, but a lot of people in the building are working on th the intersection of those two worlds right now. So, right. you know, my colleagues on the social team are looking for strong photography. Um, we have someone working overnight from Hawaii and from London. They're oh, cool. looking for strong photography when I'm not there to share that it. That was a question. It's like, how are you? Uh, yeah, it's, no. 24, <laughs> it's a 24 hour thing. And yeah. I think that I I think that I read, I don't know if I read something. You just posted something on Facebook. It was an interview on you or something like mm -hmm. that. Question and answer. And you said that you work from like 9 a.m. until 9 or 10 p.m. Yeah. Just constantly monitoring and or scheduling, I would imagine. Do you do, do you do things on a schedule or do you usually hit it and post it right away? We have a schedule, but you can't um, auto post on Instagram. So I can't say post at 3 o'clock right. and post That's itself. True. Yep. So, yeah, to a certain extent, you know, Soon I enough, post right before I go to sleep. But it's ready. I don't have to, you know, write it right before I go to sleep. Um, and what's most important? I mean, obviously, you have these big meetings with, you know, the director of photography and, and, and who, who have like we want to have a point. Is it is it are you after just engagement? Because I'm noticing now on, on Instagram, you can connect your pages your business page or whatever on yeah. Facebook to it. And then you can actually get detailed analytics on engagement on your photos on Instagram from reach likes. And it, there's a couple different um, mm -hmm. statistics that you can get. Um, and then also this same with same with Facebook. Now you've got likes, loves, angries, you know, <laughs>, laughs and all range. that kind of a whole range. Human emotion. Is it all about engagement? Is it uh, what kind of statistics do you guys look at? Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any one answer, and each platform's a little bit different. So, you know, with Facebook, we're trying to accomplish different things. It's a huge traffic driver, which uh -huh. is important. But we also, with Facebook, actually can one, pull yeah. up. Which one was it? Actually, it was back in, how do I get back? Oh, you want to go to Sorry. this? <laughs> um, here it is. So, this is... You might recognize these photos. They won the Pulitzer Prize this year. Yes. Um, but this little package on the New York Times Facebook feed reached an, an incredible number of people. Um, and to me, 
that's really important. And I don't care about the likes necessarily because this isn't this isn't really a subject that makes you want to go like this, you know? <laughs> right, right. The Syrian crisis, um, yeah. And the same thing on but Instagram. But it's terribly important for it's people to see. It's terribly important. And, and this one, people did see it. Even if they didn't stop to read the caption, even if they didn't, you know, stop to do this or write a comment, it, it somehow passed by you know, millions and millions of people. Um, yeah. Just like the front page of the newspaper is So, so that's in what's way. interesting is I look at that too. And yeah. it's like, well, what exactly does reach mean? Because right. it's like you, maybe you have thousands of views or likes or whatever that actually open and click and engage, but then you've got a reach of, you know, for you guys, millions, I'm yeah. sure. That means that this, what you're seeing right here has somehow passed the timeline right. of people, whether they've scrolled past it or, or whatever. Very quickly, possibly, but you know. Which, which still, I mean, it's still your logo. Yeah. Uh, people don't see Carrie, uh, Carrie Mack on no. here. That's, <laughs> that's sort of a behind the scenes thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, you know, they see the New York Times logo. They see the photos. Uh, they, you know, it's made it onto someone's platform, right. which is super, super interesting. It's, it's important with this kind of image. And I think that's, you know, when you're talking about how well did a photo do, and it is something we talk about I'll, with Instagram specifically, you know, we're looking at numbers, we're looking at likes. And now that we can see reach and, and these kinds of things a little more easily, um, it's, it's interesting. Um, and we want to make sure that people see our photos, but we're not going to, I don't always expect a, a hard news image or a really sad image to um, you know do that well but if people are commenting and having conversations about it or tagging their friends um, I think that's a mark of the success um, I'm gonna go through these photos yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're in any particular order if we want to start somewhere or um, maybe start at the first one yeah we'll just start um, so these are um, this is just a few examples of um, some of the stuff our staff photographers have been working on so um, you know, a lot of what I do is sharing photos from big stories we have or small stories, great photos, sharing great photos. But I'm also um, encouraging our staff to work on, on projects of their own on so Instagram. So this is an interesting one, Jim Estrin. Jim Estrin, when was this? Maybe last fall, I can't remember exactly, but he wanted to walk the length of Broadway, which is something I think a lot of New Yorkers think about doing. Sure. Uh, but he wanted to walk slowly. So slowly. He, <laughs> he walked over maybe six or seven weeks, something like so that. Just would take chunks of it at a time. And yeah, he wanted to make sure that he, uh, you know, And was he shooting this range. regular camera and, tra- and then posting it? This he shot on his phone. So it was all yeah. iPhone at that yeah. time. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, we've done a few um, projects. This is Ruth Fremson. Um, she, she used to be based in New York and she moved to Seattle. And along the way, she took photos. Um, and it was kind of, I think she was almost, she was very new to Instagram when she did this. And took these are I think some of these are newer but she took very quiet intimate moments from her road trip across and it was beautiful Um, and she shot I think mostly with phone and we ran photos on lens and all over Instagram. I remember I was in the page one meeting as an intern for the first time a cell phone photo was used on page one. Oh wow. (laughs) It was during uh, there was a Spanish there was a bombing um, in the Spanish train systems and somebody had, you know, snapped a photo while they were trying to escape and all this kind of stuff. And I remember it was like, it was a big deal. Like, A, is it going to hold up on the front page? Because this was, geez, 10, 11 years ago now. Mm-hmm. So it was, you know, the, the resolution of these things were, were terrible. But it was the first time that, like, the, the New York Times did something like this. So it was a yeah. really big deal. Um, but nowadays, it's like you can you can go out and document everything with your phone these days right. and, and, and I've, I I almost find that having the phone in some situations is much better you're less of a target you're, you're more you know fly on the wall um, heck you could go photograph a Trump rally in a different perspective and not draw the scrutiny of right. the entire crowd because you are press um, which is pretty insane so I think everyone's different um, you know I don't tell people they have to use phones if they're going to <laughs> work with this stuff because a lot of our photographers just aren't comfortable with that and I think that's okay right um, you know when Doug's doing his Instagram story he's obviously using a phone because right. that's a that's much easier way to do yeah. it but, um, but, but something like this is a little different um, this is Damon Winter mm-hmm. he does not love shooting with his phone and I'm not going to tell Damon Winter what to use Damon <laughs> Winter was my first mentor yeah. ever well not ever I interned at the LA Times too back oh, when okay. he was there and so he was the first photographer I went on an actual like assignment with, yeah. you know, at a big publication. And it was for like a celebrity portrait shoot. And then just watching him work yeah. and using the, he was using medium format cameras, just playing around with light. He's so amazing. He's Damon's great. just. 
This is um, top notch. He worked on this story about um, Canadians who are sponsoring uh, Syrian refugees, Canadian uh-huh. families or neighbors, a range of different types of people. Uh, but, you know, he shot these really lovely portraits and I can't remember how many ran in print and online, but not all of them. Um, and so we decided to find different ways to share them on social media. And for Instagram, I chose um, a different selection of photos and the reporters actually like helped write the captions, jumping in with little details about these people that uh, you know, didn't make it to the story. So right. Um, while we're we're going through this, I have a couple quick, quick questions. Uh, how often do you work? I mean, obvi- I know that the New York Times has a relationship with Facebook, um, which obviously means Instagram too. I'm I'm curious how much do you, do you and maybe it's not you directly, but yeah. does the New York Times work directly with these platforms to sort of like figure out the best way to utilize it? Um, one of the things I know I've noticed, and I believe I touched on it a year ago or whenever we had our last panel was that you know different publications were um, working with with Facebook to have their content natively within the Facebook uh, I don't know atmosphere I don't know what the word is instant (laughs) right (laughs) instant articles instant instant articles Um, and I have been noticing lately that when I click on a a link that's not one like if I click on the New York Times link from you guys it's mm-hmm. poop pops up mm-hmm. if I click on someone else's link to an article outside of it sometimes it just like takes a full minute to load or yeah. something I feel like there's they're putting a lot of something <laughs> that I don't know <laughs> juju in it but <laughs> yeah. how, how do you guys work with with uh, these we guys? have uh, our social team has uh, I should know the number but maybe about 10 people um, uh-huh. and you know one woman who's my boss on that end and um, so she and a few others talk pretty directly with Facebook and Twitter. Uh-huh. You know, they don't have any influence over what we post ever, but we do talk to them to try to find out what's coming up, get tips, get hints. Yeah. Um, but and also, um, you know, talk about what we're doing. So we do you have any tips or, or <laughs> tricks? I mean, because obviously you might know a little more than the average Joe yeah. um, on social. Uh, do you have any general tips for photographers and how to maximize their reach or engage their audience better? I think it's, um, again, that's a hard question to answer because it's different for everyone, but um, I'm really interested to see what people will be doing with Instagram stories. Maybe it'll fade away, but I think right now there's potential to do some cool stuff. Well, what's really cool is like the the Lochte. Yeah. That's how you say his name, right? I keep (laughs) messing up his name. Um, We looked at his, his, the Snapchat story, but you can actually upload real content to Snap, or I'm not Snapchat. Instagram Instagram story, (laughs) same thing, Um, to Instagram stories now. Um, So it doesn't necessarily have to come directly from your phone. It's a little tricky. You have to play with it a bit. And it's vertical, which makes it it a little bit It is vertical, yeah. I think Olivier Laurent was hosting a discussion about the vertical image on his Facebook. Oh, and that was, I shared that on on Photo (laughs) Brigade. Because he said, I quote, vertical is the new horizontal. Right. You know, get with it, folks. Yeah. And he's been, he's been like on the cutting edge of, I think social media in journalism uh, specifically he has been oh, yeah. um, and it's it's been really neat to sort of follow what he's been up to um, over the last couple of years. I think I was reading something um, someone I can't remember what magazine someone from another magazine said something to the effect of you know magazines have always been vertical <laughs> so so the cover image on a magazine has never been a horizontal picture or, you know in most cases not a horizontal picture right so in some respects you know for them it makes a lot of sense to use a platform like that um but I, yeah i have a question from sure. from the the interwebs <laughs> um someone asks uh has there uh, been a really a really reward rewarding interaction from comments ever like have you ever not been brought down but been brought like oh yeah this is this is great how, or, or yeah. surprising instance i have i mean actually this photo this is a very simple and kind of silly photo um you know we're talking we're, we're sharing more photography and we're sharing bagels and we're also sharing fun stuff so mm-hmm. this uh this metro desk the city desk wanted to ask people how they keep their dogs cool in the summertime <laughs> <laughs> and it was a very slow day and george etheridge who's one of our interns this summer oh, um, okay. he 
didn't have anything to do. An assignment fell through, and so I asked him to go to Prospect Park and look for some hot dogs. Hot and then dogs. I realized that oh, I, I was like, ha, did I clarify with him that I'm looking for the animal? <laughs> <laughs> like, but anyway, so he, he found these two little girls in this miniature Mustang with their dog, whose name I forget. Um, and anyway, the comments here are just positive because it's a happy, it's a happy scene, and a lot yeah. of people just love seeing these two little girls kind of owning it. But, um, you know, I think... So, even going back to the harder news, sharing that kind of image and seeing um, people really engaging with it makes me feel good because I'm not here to just share photos of dogs. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so scenes from the Paris attacks is one example. Yeah. When people really stop to think about what they're seeing and engage with the story that we're telling. Yeah. Um, but we also, you know, we hear a lot of positive feedback on stuff like the Olympics images that Doug and Chang Lee and um, James Hill and Mauricio Lima were taking Ugh, over two weeks. Those guys are so great. They did an, an amazing all. job, and we love tried to all. share a lot of it. So, you know, you hear a lot of positive stuff about the photography. Um, I have a question asking, uh, could you talk about how you select a photo for a particular media? Yeah. Um, it's, it's a good question, <laughs> and it's hard to answer, but... Um, they are different, you know, sometimes from one story we'll share one thing on Facebook, a different image on Twitter, and a third image on Instagram, in part because we are focusing on Square with Instagram, right. even though I know you can go So you guys aren't Square. posting any vertical or horizontal? We, we post the occasional vertical, very occasional. Mm -hmm. I think we'll be posting one this weekend. Um, but for the most part, we decided just to be cohesive, since we are sharing so many different types of mm -hmm. images. We wanted something sort that would sort of define. The, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, I'm trained now to look for squares. So <laughs> that's part of it. Interesting. Yeah, and I noticed um, one other question I had was yeah. uh, crediting photographers. So on, on all the Instagram show photos now you have no honestly not, I did okay. this just for this oh just for purpose. this okay I was, <laughs> curi I I was curious sure, about yeah. it but in the captions yeah well in you know in this this is um George the same intern on the first day of summer I made him run all over New York City to take nice. photos a very again a, a lighter subject but it was the first day of summer um and the the idea was actually to get um readers and Instagram followers to submit their own images yeah. so we actually took over the account with just summer photos for a day yeah. um, and I, I tag George in the caption and right. you know try to make the caption about him in some cases and same with I all think that that's super cool because yeah. a lot of people are also and one of the things that we talked about was you know how do you get people to take over obviously this is a, your staffer you yeah. have his work is is your work yeah. and you can post whatever you want but there are a lot of different um, freelancers and so on that are taking over different uh, uh, Instagram accounts for different publications right. that some people are asking them to do it for free or this this or that but one thing I think that's really important and I've noticed that you guys have specifically been doing is crediting and talking about the photographers giving them a link so that there's a residual effect yeah with that they can actually get some credit or some followers and and so on it's pretty amazing to see people's you know Andrea Mohan our dance photographer has almost 14,000 people following her now and had zero uh, maybe a year ago um, and so part part of my job really is to you know help people understand that we have staff photographers working very hard and right. sometimes telling the story behind the photo it depends I mean sometimes the story itself um, you know, there are stories that reporters may have been working on for many months. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to share, <laughs> mm -hmm. to share those details. Um, like if I go to the Instagram feed, where is it? The uh, Safari Sorry. up here. There we go. Um, so, you know, this image here is from our, we're doing a series um, covering every murder in the Bronx this uh -huh. year. Um, or sorry, not in the Bronx, in, in the 40th precinct of the Bronx. Uh -huh. um, and they're going deep. So it's a, it's a really interesting experiment in, in covering crime in the city. Um, and in this case, the reporters, you know, and this photographer went to Mexico to, you know, tell the full story of this man. Um, but uh, this image shows a coffee cup and a donut at the shrine that his sister made for him which I thought was just yeah. you know really telling detail but we we didn't really talk about the photographer here we talked about this man and his life and all all of the things that went into it cool uh, very cool um, one thing that I, I think I might have glossed over a little bit and I have a, a question yeah. from the internet as well <laughs> but um, the everything that you post <clears throat> on social is it 
fact checked? Is, is, is there an editing process the same that it is in print? Yeah, um, it's a slightly different process, um, but we do you know everything that goes on to the Instagram account, for instance. Often we're working from already previously edited stories that have gone through you know a, a five process. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, and then you know I'll write a caption, or my colleague Jessica will write a caption, and then we'll swap and read over it. Um, yeah. So we're not necessarily always going through the copy desk which is pretty scary but we're often working with already very clean copy and, right. and fact checked um, um, stuff uh, you know something like the girls in the car there was no story there so right we, we write wrote, our own which is fun yeah. that's cool <laughs> um, and we, yeah we do edit it let's pretty. Uh, pull some more of these suckers up as we talk um, sure. I guess we gotta get through we were I don't know where we ended but probably yeah. about there yeah. um, and then uh, in general, like, is as I have was in college, it was, you've got to get, I learned, it was, when I was in college, I was the first student in my class to go digital, all right? That was a big deal. As I was going through school, the big thing was all photographers needed to learn video and multimedia right. to be able to get out there and get jobs and have that skill set to be hired. How has, is, is, the, is the same thing with social now, like, like, is, is it, I, I honestly have been doing a lot more commercial corporate work, a lot of work with photo brigade lately. So less, less with the times as of late, mm -hmm. especially since the, um, you know, social has been, been huge now. Um, is it important for a photographer? Like, will you maybe pass on one photographer or another because that person, you know, that person's not going to do social well or, no. yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> no. curious. In I mean, general. you know, me, if I were looking for someone to do, um, we do projects over the weekend sometimes, or we cover, you know, we do like Instagram projects leading up to a big news event. Um, and when I'm looking for someone to work on something like that, I might, you know, lean towards someone who has a strong social presence or at least a, an understanding of it. Um, although, you know, not, not always, we've done a few that we right. just wanted a great photographer. Right. So, um, but, it, but if someone does like a, I don't know if you've done the takeover per se, like other places have. Usually everything kind of goes through you and you post them directly, right? Yeah, we, right? Do, we go through the editing process. Yeah, it's... Um, okay. So we haven't done uh, that kind of takeover, but we've done takeovers where I s have someone out shooting and then we come up with an edit and we kind of coordinate with them um, so that they're posting some on their feed and we're posting some on our feed. Um, okay. So, but yeah, no, I mean, I don't think... I think that the the basics are still very important yeah you know the actual photos and and the little bits of reporting that come with them so i'm seeing these older photos right. come through here in square format yes i should note <laughs> which means that you're posting these on instagram these are a few that we've posted on my times and actually going back to the question about you know positive commentary mm -hmm. this is one area where um we see a lot of that so we we post um old archival images pretty regularly and we've done a few a number of weekends dedicated to various themes from the archives mm -hmm. um, and this is one area where I've really seen people connecting and just saying you know how do I see more of this how do I see more of this mm -hmm. this is amazing um, so these are some that we've done and we're actually hoping we're, we're planning um, a future project that's coming relatively soon focusing on this stuff because we have millions and millions of photos to work with do you so. foresee it just going on the regular account or you think you're going to probably start a new account like i think we'll start something different yeah. <laughs> and we'll keep uh, keep sharing them here too because people people love them yeah yeah it's a great way to just engage the community yeah and it's, it'd be interesting to see like some of these people that that you photographed way back when it maybe as young people or something if they are on social back you know in the day and you click hit them up with it and they're like <laughs> oh my gosh when like, we when we first started sharing archival images we every photo i think we did a project about like beaches or something early on last summer and we were researching the name of the people in every photo trying to find out if they were you know mm -hmm. alive today or active on social media i don't think we've had anyone say yeah, that's me <laughs> yeah but <laughs> I, I would love to see that happen that would be super cool um i'm not sure if there was anything else that we have um oh wait there's a, a couple different uh well, this is one of the, the, you know, projects that's kind of ongoing right now. Andrea Mohan, our dance photographer, is just documenting dance outdoors in New York City in the summer because there's something almost every night, um, a range of different types of dance. And 
that's her focus. Oops, that is not her. How it's did not that her. happen? <laughs> Clicked on someone's comment. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so she's just running around the city looking for different types of people doing different types of dance outdoors, mm-hmm. which is lovely. And she's seeing a really positive reaction to that. Oh, and this was the slideshow with uh, yeah, this is Jim's, Jim's. Uh, Jim's uh, walking Broadway series, which really was cool. So he was doing it with his cell phone. Mm-hmm. Um, which is really nice. And it was interesting, uh, thinking back to, to Jim, I, I remember talking to him, and I was I was really big into social, me- into social media back way back when, and I said to him, oh, I want to do something about Instagram. And at that point, it was still like, oh, we're not sure we got to figure out what, what's what with Instagram. Right. But it's just, everything's changed nowadays. So. <laughs> and always changing. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, now photographers don't have to, but they can think about learning to shoot 360 photos and videos. Mm-hmm. They can learn what to do with Facebook Live. You know, there's a whole range of different things you can work with. Al Drago, who's... uh, I love Al. Al. (laughs) What's up, Al? How you doing? I don't know. (laughs) Uh, But he's our intern in Washington right now, um, and he's a Snapchat pro. He is the best at it. Absolutely (laughs) the best. It's fun to watch him. And I was excited to see that when he was um, brought in because it's something that a lot of people aren't very comfortable with. Mm -hmm. and this was a, a road trip with Ruth. This we we briefly talked trip. about, and mm-hmm. this is this is just uh, on the lens blog. Mm-hmm. Um, whether you guys have written about it. A lot of the stuff that we've done on social has made its way in, onto NewYorkTimes.com and even into print, uh-huh. which is great. I yeah. think there's no there are no limits. Um, yeah. And so this <laughs> this photo, you mentioned you were going to talk about this. And yeah. sorry for our flickering. It's we're having a little technical issues, Oops. but is it? No, I know it's just it's just a glitch. Okay. Um, so um, tell tell me about this photo. Well, this is our our top photo on NY Times at this point. And again, I don't con- think too much about these things, but I do take note. And and this one kind of skyrocketed. Um, <laughs> so it was Fourth of July, Coney Island, rain, fireworks, roller coasters. Yep. People loved it. Um, and the photo editors in the meeting the next day, I, I shared the news that this might become our top photo, and everyone kind of groaned. Groaned, <laughs> because, yeah. Because you know, it's not, it's not, um, it's a beautiful photo, great work. Um, it's just what but people it, like these it's days. It's what people like. And, and this, th- and then user generated uh, right. content. It's another divisive topic, um, definitely. Mm-hmm. I think that, um, so this is, um, I showed you George's photos from the first day of summer. Every photo we posted that day, we said, share your own photos, share your view. Right. And this is um, a selection of some of those images um, from all over the city, focusing just on New York. Um, but it's, uh, it's a range of stuff. And I think, you know, some people are concerned when they see the, uh, some people in the photography community that is are concerned when they see this kind of thing. Um, I think, you know, these are not for the most part, not photos taken by professionals. I think they offer a slice of what the day looked like for a lot of New Yorkers. Um, Mm -hmm. We're not going to do only that. (laughs) We're never going to do only that, but I think it's an important thing. It's a good way to engage with, with the audience. Yeah. It's a great way to engage. I think people, get so excited when they hear you, from you the guys also did like a, a day in the life type thing or, or the time in the world or what was it you did oh, it was a like moment in time a moment in time. <laughs> that there was that was in 2010 I, think? I can't believe that that was so long ago now so i remember jim calling me about that and saying we're doing this you gotta help me share it and so that da-da-da. was no that must have been 2000 no it was 2010 but it was before instagram um and it was before Snapchat and before people were pointing their phones at everything all the yeah. time and Jim and the lens team David Dunlap at the time uh-huh. me um, a number of other interns uh-huh. spent forever <laughs> putting together and also our interactive team um, putting together this feature it was um, we were supposed to we asked people to take a photo at the same moment in time right. on one day um, and then we collected them and put them on this like spinning globe, which you could look for right now, but it's a little wonky these days. <laughs> yeah, it's probably gonna it'll yeah. probably glitch out the yeah. computer if I do it. Um, but it was it, uh, pretty funny to think that you know at the time that was super re- revolutionary, and now everyone's yeah. doing it every. every I remember two my seconds. first uh, multimedia at the Times was uh, I went down to Hurricane Katrina. That happened while I was an intern, and I did a, a portrait series and. Going back, I, I, I went and searched for it recently, and it took me forever to find it because it was, it was back on the old platforms. It was Flash. Right. You know, you guys were using, f- you know, actual Flash, so it doesn't even work on an iPhone, I don't think. <laughs> no. um, and how cutting edge I thought that was back then. Yeah. Um, but, but I'm just truly amazed with where the New York Times and other publications are going 
uh, specifically with their online um, storytelling. Uh, you, you know, the just just the I, I don't even know how to explain it. There are some special features that you guys do where you scroll down the page, the photos are completely interactive as you go down, the story's interwoven in it, it's, you can click on things, you can hear things, you can watch a video, and you almost don't even need to read the article, which I love to say because, <laughs> you know, as a visual storyteller yeah. myself, and as you know. I mean, with, you know, with the Olympics, um, they did a feature, I don't, it didn't happen every day, but it happened with some of the bigger events, um, where we kind of told the story, Simone Biles, the gymnast, so that's yeah. one example I can think of. Um, we told the story predominantly in photos, like very quickly. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we could get them up, which was just a matter of minutes after things were happening, mm -hmm. big photos, blocks of text. Oh, that was so, so cool. So yeah. that was, um, you guys did Facebook Live for, for this. So, so one thing that's interesting is that at the Olympics, you are not allowed to do any video. Right. Like, don't even try it. Right. The Olympic <laughs> Committee will rain down Hellfire missiles on you right. if you do. So what you guys did was you, you set up, and this was through the Lens blog page, I think, right? Yeah, we did it in a few different places, but basically we, we call it a photo stream, um, and it lives on the site as well, but it's a just a stream of just a stream everything. of what's coming in yeah. kind of what a photo editor sees yeah. uh, this is i mean you have obviously some are going to be edited it, it's yeah. an edited it's not just like everything yeah i mean there were there were wire photos there too yeah. so it was reuters and ap and a few others coming through along with ours and i remember watching the gymnastics and like clicking and seeing the stream going oh no 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 i don't want to <laughs> see you know because because it was yeah. like an hour we ahead got a, or, a lot of feedback about that and it's a funny you know um the gymnasts i think that happened the team competition was like five five or five thirty one day right i put a po photo up right away we were on facebook and people were screaming at us like you're <laughs> how dare <laughs> spoiler you spoiler alert yeah <laughs> but you know it's it's happened it's yeah. happening it's so news. it's I a mean, complicated thing when nbc is controlling i feel them. like nbc <laughs> really screwed the pooch this time around on many levels I feel like that's a common yeah <laughs> not just on on uh you know the hour delay but how they reported the yeah. It was fun that, for me. I'm story. Canadian, and I've never really watched the Olympics in the U.S. before, just for I, out is of the it, country. Is it different? It is different, yeah, because it's you know it's a very American perspective, which uh -huh. makes sense, but uh -huh. very, very American. <laughs> uh, but the, you know, the Canadian version is also it, we tell stories, but Canadian athlete, you right. know, it's, it's it has its own biases. Cool, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Well, um, I think that we've pretty much hit hit on all all the topics um right. is there anything else that um maybe i didn't mention uh do you have any general tips to photographers that say want to show you their work through social or their are there hashtags <laughs> like you know no hashtags i think that would get a little too complicated Ask Carrie <laughs> or something like that no <laughs> no yeah it's please. funny my, my own social presence has gone down quite a bit since i started doing this job just because i'm spending a lot of time on that's the same platforms. thing with me on yeah. photo brigade it's yeah. like there's so much time and energy to, that's put into yeah. engaging an audience yeah and i was like, looking through my own instagram feed the other day and at it when i moved to hong kong actually i really got into it and that i got into just looking constantly for photos uh -huh. um, and it was really the first time i'd done it in that way but um lately you know when you're just checking a particular feed all of the time mm -hmm. it's it's hard to think about your own yeah it's fine but yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah um but you know i think um i'm always open to uh seeing work by photographers and talking to photographers so it's pretty easy to find me on the internet um, okay yeah <laughs> and i think my email address is even out there somewhere maybe on my website it's out there it's out there <laughs> um so cool yeah. so um just a, a quick refresher, go follow New York Times at, at NY, NY Times, Times yeah. uh, on every every Everything. social channel <laughs> at NY Times. Um, they really have some great content and stories and photos that I think that you'll really, really like. Um, so follow them. I also will say follow Photo Brigade because, you know, we sort of do a similar thing where, where it's, you know, we'd like to share the work of photographers. We have takeovers and the whole point of what we do on social is to promote the photo industry, period. You know, give people a platform to share their work, where they are, what they're doing, and just to generally um, showcase amazing, amazing work uh, in the industry. So follow us at Photo Brigade. Um, all, thanks again to uh, Adorama, their event space. Thanks again to uh, Canon Professional Services and Tenba Bags. And um, please hit the subscribe button on our YouTube and Facebook Live and all our other social. And uh, I guess that's it. 
Great. Carrie, thank you so much for being thank on you. the podcast. Uh, it was it was wonderful, and it's I will see having. you. I will see you on social. I'll be there. <laughs> we'll see you all later. Take care now. Bye.